It is an extraordinary building. It is beautiful. It has this atmosphere that is really warm and welcoming and historic. When you enter the chapel with the candles and the lights and then the big stained glass windows in the chancel at the back, I remember being totally blown away. It is the chapel for the whole college community, whether or not you're Christian, even whether or not you come to services. Most of all, what it, it represents is the college's commitment to people as, as human beings. Part of what I love about the building is that connection with the previous generations. Members of the college have been worshipping here for 300 years in pretty much the same way that we worship here now. The chapel in many ways sums up the ambition of what the fellows of the early 18th century were trying to achieve. It was built between about 1714 and 1719 as part of a plan to demolish all of the existing buildings and rebuild the college in one classical style. This is in some ways I think more reminiscent of a Roman temple than a typical medieval English Gothic church. And it was that idea of ancient Rome which was inspiring the fellows. This rebuilding of the college is also a visible representation of the college's increasing intellectual ambition. This year we completed a major project to replace the lead roofs of both the chapel and the hall. It took about 54 weeks. It's quite possible that the roofs have never been restored since they were first installed 300 years ago. The stained glass is mostly older than the chapel itself. The oldest stained glass was created in 1518. For the new chapel in 1719, as well as commissioning a new east window by Joshua Price, the college also commissioned a piece of artwork uh, for the ceiling above me here in the sanctuary. And this was of the Ascension of Christ by the painter James Thornhill. In 1719, the chapel would be very much at the heart of college life. Queen's, like all Oxford colleges, was an Anglican institution. Every fellow would have been ordained members of the church. That, of course, has changed a lot, particularly in the last 100 years. There had been proposals for uh, updating and changing the chapel and, and going with the, you know, what was the latest fashion in the 19th century. And the fellows didn't go for it. They were northerners, um, as I am, and they, they weren't going to go with these latest fads that were fashionable in the south. And, and actually, as a result, they've ended up preserving this beautiful 18th century space. So this is the bell tower. This is a, a part of the college that not many people get to see. We have um, a bell tower team and a captain of the bells. The captains of bells do leave their, leave their mark here, and that goes all the way back. So we've got one here that um, says R. Gandhi DD, 1779. And we've got one there from 46. And we've got a few names uh, at the top and around the side that I recognise from my time as well. So it's uh, uh, very much a tradition that continues. We have three choral services every week. The vast majority of it is sung, so you can turn up and you can literally just sit and let other people sing and just experience the beauty of the music. I sing in the choir here, and it's a place I come three times a week, if not more. And I see the chapel as, as sort of a safe haven away from all the academic pressures of Oxford. There's a, there's a beautiful thing about singing in this building that I haven't found in any other building that I've sang in. The acoustic allows individual voices to resonate very well, but also the blend across the whole choir is astonishing. I'd been conducting concerts in here actually for several years before I arrived as uh, director of music at Queen's, and it was my favourite space for music making in Oxford even then. In the 20th century, this chapel had a remarkable musical life building up and it was used as a concert space, particularly in the time when Bernard Rose was organist, in other words, director of music here. And a lot of top international performers would come and 
perform here in concert. And then Bernard Rose's successor, James Dalton, obtained the college's permission to build, for the first time in any Oxford or Cambridge chapel, an organ that represented the, the revival of Baroque techniques of building organs. think of this as a place of academic excellence, but actually it's a place that celebrates and nurtures talent and excellence of, of all kinds and that you find in, in everybody around you in the college. It all combines to give this feeling that this chapel has seen hundreds of years of worship and hundreds of years of undergraduates coming along unwillingly and willingly and sitting here tired and worried and stressed, but getting a sense of peace. The fact that the college has and continues to invest in this space and in my role and in the choir here is that commitment to the idea that what we're doing here is not just about getting degrees or getting papers published. It's actually about a community that is seeking truth and seeking meaning and that education is about growth in all those ways.